Ashley joined our company in 2014. She was always a, a phenomenal personal producer. She now does over a million dollars a month of production with 185 riders. She is driven. She wants to do big things in the world. Ashley Tarr is one of the top examples of leadership in this company. The significance of Tyler and Ashley together is two dynamic personalities that are extremely focused on leadership development and challenging people to truly accomplish um, their hopes and dreams. Tyler's also been an absolute rock. He is one of the, the steadiest individuals that I know. It's been incredibly helpful uh, to have his strength and presence. With Tyler Harris and Ashley Tarr, you know, joining forces, I mean, the whole, the whole business is getting ready to pop. Please help us welcome advisory board member Ashley Tarr and Tyler Harris. How's everybody doing? I was made to be great. Babe, what are you doing? Sorry. We have a little nervous. We got all these agents from oh all gosh. over the country here. Sorry, you go ahead. No, I mean, it is an important statement. We're just not quite there yet. Sorry. And this is a really important moment. Actually, I want every one of you to make this moment not your present, but your past. Because 10 years from now, I want you to look back at this moment on this day and know that it was the day you decided to be great. You see, I think greatness is often viewed from afar, like it's something out there we're supposed to attain. Maybe one day when I do this, I'll be great, or when I have that, I'll be great. I think greatness is viewed as the goal. But, but what if greatness is actually something within you that's waiting to be uncovered and then fought for? And what if uncovering and fighting for your greatness is the most noble thing you can do for the world around you? All of us recognize this statue. It's Michelangelo's David. His perspective on when he created this masterpiece was that he wasn't creating anything at all. He was merely uncovering or revealing the powerful figure that was inside. He was responsible for the breaking, chipping away the excess to reveal what was already in the marble. That's brilliance. That's breakthrough. And that's our job here today. Just like Michelangelo, our job is to help you realize what's already inside of you waiting to be unleashed. Have you ever felt that disconnect between the life you're currently living and the, the greatness that you know is inside of you? Like this chasm between your potential and your, your current situation? Man, you see, I think some of you just know that you were made for greatness. You know that you were built for so much more. It's just you stand and you look around at your life and the evidence keeps testifying against you. So if we're all made to be great, if greatness is possible for every human on the planet, then why do so few seem to achieve it? Well, before that inner voice of unworthiness starts screaming too loudly for some of you to hear anything else, Let's just go ahead and silence that nasty narrative. You, yes you, who would be planted squarely in the back row if you were here with us live today, you were made to be great, to believe anything else. It's an insult to the one who created you, and it's a declaration that the gift of life you were given was meant to be mediocre and meaningless. And I just refuse to believe you're the one person placed on this earth to be average. Perhaps it's the glamorization of mediocrity that stopped you in your tracks. You're in good company here, but I think most of us would agree that most people live a life of easy over excellence. Why does the world tell us there's something wrong with wanting to be great? Why do they look at people like Tom Brady or LeBron James and shout their greatness from the rooftops, but meanwhile, when you launch your business or go on an agency owner run, they start saying things like, don't you put, put too much on your plate or, why don't you just get a steady job with benefits? There's only one thing a person that has chosen to settle for mediocrity loathes more than ambition, and that's watching you step into your greatness. I don't know about you, but I, took, I, I learned a long time ago 
not to take advice from people on burning out that have never been on fire. But maybe you're like me, and at one point, or maybe multiple points, you've achieved some level of greatness, but then you lost it. This was me seven years ago. After losing my marriage, my business, all of my money, I'd lost the most important thing, my willingness to try again. See, some people fear the failure that they've never even experienced yet. I feel the failures of all of my past becoming the narrative of my life. And so I put up walls to protect myself. It's hard to lose when you're not playing to win. It's hard to fail when you're not taking any risk. And that was me. It was the greatest excuse ever. Every time I would end up quitting or getting fired from some sales job, I would tell all my friends, ah, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't really trying. If I'd have gone all in, I would have crushed it. But the idea for me of going all in again came with it the weight, with the weight of every reason why I wasn't good enough. Can any of you relate? Let's get real. That guy that you just saw, that hunk, <laughs> hunk of marble, maybe, waiting to be broken, that was seven years ago. Honestly, it's painful for me to even look at that picture, uh, not only because of my physical appearance, but because I can literally feel the pain in my eyes, and I can see the hopelessness. But I wonder if what was true for me is true for most of us. That as insurmountable and devastating as my reality was, it only took one thing for everything to change. And that was my perspective. My perspective on myself, my perspective on my pain, but most importantly, my perspective of the purpose of my pain. You see, the very things that you keep listing as the reasons that you can't or you won't or you will never be great are the very reasons you will be if you choose to see them rightly. Because here's what I know. Everything is born through the pain of labor. Everything is born through the pain of labor. And so is the greatness that is inside of you. You see, the life that you're created for, it can't be entered into around your pain, only through it because the life that you're created for, it's too big for the current version of you. Your future you actually requires your present pain to come to life. In performance training, we used a, a phrase called time under tension. All you bros out there, you know why you train. You're after those gains, right? Well, science would say there's one way. There's one way to your gains, there's one way to your goals, there's one way to growth and it's time under tension. It's the amount of time that you can and you will, most importantly, stay under the weight. And all that tension, all the pressure, all the pain, it gets larger and larger and larger the longer you sit under it. And while that's happening, the muscle fibers are actually breaking down. They're tearing apart. In fact, I think if someone didn't understand the growth process, were to look right at it, they would think something terrible is happening. And something's happening all right. It's called growth. You see, it takes a proper perspective on pain to understand that every breakthrough first requires a breaking. The more time under tension, the more breaking. The more breaking, the more growth. And what's true for our physical capabilities is, is true for our internal capacity as well. Real gains come from time under tension. And it is a choice. You can run from growth. You can run away from the greatest version of you. You can run away for it from every opportunity that's out there waiting for that person to show up in life. And here's, I think, the, the tragedy for an aspiring leader. If you're unwilling to walk straight into and stand in your pain, you will be unprepared and unqualified to walk anyone else through theirs. That's called empathy. I am so grateful for every painful breaking over these last seven years that led me to this life of purpose. Without all of that time under tension, I would not only hold everyone else to my standard, but I would see their pain as small or insignificant. But no, 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 I, I still know that pain. I still know that breaking. I still know that feeling. I know what it feels like to talk to people about their life savings and their financial well-being. Meanwhile, I was staying in a $29 hotel hoping my car would make it the three hours back home. I still know that feeling of my alarm clock going off at 4 a.m. and I would just start crying because I was at a level of exhaustion I didn't even know was possible. 
I still feel that 11th night on the road, sitting in a parking lot, FaceTiming my daughter, telling her daddy's coming home soon. Trying to convince myself that I was away for my family, not from my family. Meanwhile, looking in the rearview mirror saying, God, why is all of this happening to me? Why am I going through all of this? You see, every moment that felt like breaking forged in me the ability to walk somebody else through theirs. And why did I go through all that? To become the person who can stand here in front of you today and tell you, don't stop now. Don't look back. Yeah. Keep fighting. We don't need perfect leaders. We need people just like you and me with a messy story, with a past riddled with ups and downs. We need people just like you and me that have experienced the pain of failure, the agony of defeat. But most importantly, we need people just like you and me that make the decision today to be great. You see, to lean into pain is to lean into leadership. If your story here was perfect, if yours was the one perfect story, you would actually be incapable of leading. See, you and me, we don't need more influence over someone's life until we can have more compassion for their life. And compassion isn't carved out in us any other way than pain. And this is your choice just like it is mine. Label your time under tension painful. Nothing but painful. Run from the greatness that you're meant to walk into and abdicate your ability to lead. Or you can sit solidly under whatever tension you face because you know, you know what happens after that because you know that your breakthrough is going to mean breakthrough for someone else. Sit solidly under it because you've chosen a perspective that assigns a purpose to that pain. You choose to embrace your own breaking and you'll, you'll find not only your own breakthrough, you'll be able to walk hundreds of others through theirs. You see, this is the great gift of 2020. This is the great gift of 2020 if we will lean into it because 2020 has been painful. 2020 has been so full of loss and stress and pain and breaking. But 2020 doesn't have to be labeled as the worst year of your life. It will be if you run from the pain of it. But if you lean into it, if you lean into the pain, you will actually look back and remember 2020 as the year that equipped you to step into your greatness. Guys, I wish I could tell you that this road to success over the last seven years has been straight, but it's been full of ups and downs, uh, challenges and triumphs. But you know what I've learned by leaning into the pain of every challenge? That what's waiting on the other side of it is a blessing, yes, but what's also waiting on the other side of it is an even bigger challenge. And as you strengthen under the weight, as you grow, so do your challenges. They may look different, and so will you, but they'll still be there. But that's the whole point of leveling up. There's always more levels of impact. There's always more levels of growth waiting on you to become the person that can fulfill them. I'm telling you, on my way to 2020, 2020, 2020, <laughs> on my way to 2020, I felt like I was on the way to the top. But 2020 had a different plan, a painful plan, but a beautiful plan. I experienced more heartache brokenness, pain, and breaking last year than the last six years combined. And that doesn't even take into account COVID or this worldwide pandemic that we were in. But I leaned into it like I never have before. I surrendered parts of me that I was still holding on to. And I <laughs> fought through each of those challenges like my life depended on it, because it actually did. And you know where that got me? On this stage, with the woman of my dreams, in a company that I love, and with the opportunity of a lifetime standing right in front of me. I made a choice to lean in to the time under tension because I want to be great. You should want to be great. You should want to be exactly who you were made to be. That's one of the first. I was made to be great. <laughs> uh. I want us all to say it together. Stand up and let's say it together, but I don't want you to say it like you mean it. Stand up, guys. <laughs> I want you to say it like you truly believe it. 
I want you to say it in such a way that it would actually resurrect the greatness inside of you that's been buried. I want you to say it like your future depends on it. I want you to say it like your family depends on it. And I want you to say it like your life depends on it because it actually does. Are you ready? All right. So on the <laughs> count of three, we're all going to say, I was made to be great. All right. One, One two, two, three. three. I, I was, was made, made to, to be, be great. great. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> As one company, one team, one family, we all just spoke our truth, that we were made to be great. Here's the thing. Every day we choose with our actions the difference between who we say we are and who we really are. I've been telling you for a year that I look just like Matthew McConaughey. Be a lot cooler if you did. Oh, <laughs>